understand why those numbers are that way. They, they consistently win over 91% of the games that they've played over the last 25 years inside the WCC. A long way to go, but this year's Gonzaga team has not been quite the same looking to turn things around in conference play. Both teams started their league season 2-0, and and here we go. Zags have the ball first from Santa Clara. Ryan Nemhard, their point guard, who's been playing much better, shooting the ball much better lately. Nolan Hickman, the junior, tried to pass it down low to Anton Watson, threw it out of bounds. This is Steve Nash. Steve Nash is used to making plays with the ball in his hand, so it's fine that they would go ahead and pass it to him on the first <laughs> possession. He hasn't been back here in 20 years. First time down the floor, they chuck him the ball. And meanwhile, Brett Napper, point guard for Herb Sendek's team, trying a wraparound pass of his own, and he bounces it out of bounds. Understanding early conference game on the road for Gonzaga, but Santa Clara's got to come out and take advantage of the turnover opportunities they have. When Gonzaga has empty possessions, you have to take care of the ball and make sure you give yourself a chance if you want to pull off an upset against them. Long rebound and the extra pass to Ryan Nemhard. That three no good. And Adama Alpha Ball gets the rebound. So now the Broncos looking for the first bucket of the game. This crossover move and the jumper goes for Carlos Marshall. Yeah, it did a great job just utilizing his shoulders and strength to bounce the freshman Dusty Stormer off of him to create that space to elevate up over the top. And Marshall played well last week in the first two WCC games. And almost 13 points per contest. That could be a tough matchup for the freshman Stromer. Meanwhile, Anton Watson gets the first two for the Zags. And he's a tough matchup for anybody. I mean, he's just so versatile. I'd like to see him be more assertive in this offense. After the big seven-footer, Christoph Tilly. Now Johnny O'Neill, who drives and uses his last to score. Pretty strong move from the transfer, O'Neill. Ike, the double team came quickly. And they're going to have to. Uh, it'll help them avoid foul trouble, and it puts more pressure on other players. You cannot allow Ike to get a piece of the paint and, and take time with his back to the basket to get to the rim. MR3, no good. Tilly, defensive board. We showed you the starting five on both sides. Broncos have been using their bench for Gonzaga. Man, not getting Ben Gregg's been good off the bench, and that's about it lately. And they're going to need Ben Gregg to get, provide that spark here tonight as well. Gallo Tilly, good matchup against EK. Uses a spin move and then travels. Got cut off. That was good defense. Eighth year at Santa Clara. Of course, he's been a head coach for a lot longer than that. Herb Sendek. In this sport. Not many more well-respected than Herb as just a pure basketball coach. Well, he's won everywhere he's gone, whether it's Miami, Ohio, NC State, Arizona State, to now it's Santa Clara where the, the feeling around this program and the buzz is so much better than where it's been for a very long period of time. Hickman had a good look and then just came up way short. Marshall trying to get by Stromer. Bounces it down low. That was a tough pass. E.K. reached around, committed the foul. Got a good pin and seal underneath by Tilly. And E.K. got caught behind him. And Marshall's just playing with it. I think that's a matchup where they feel like they can try to use some of that strength maybe against Dusty Stromer, try to create some offense. And Marshall goes out early. Tyree Bryan, who plays a lot, comes in off the bench. Marshall's not 100%. He's been under the weather. We'll see how much he plays. Catch and shoot three. Off to the side from Ball. Slow start offensively for both teams. Neither team in a rhythm early. I think it's really important for Santa Clara to handle the emotions of the night, Dave. Hickman, three, off the front of the iron. Big crowd, retro uniforms, Steve Nash in the building. Ball, good touch. You know, how do you handle that? This isn't a normal situation even for Santa Clara. You know, for Gonzaga, everywhere they go, it's the biggest game when they go on the road in conference play. But for Santa Clara, you know it's going to be a big crowd because the Zags are in town. But now you've got a little bit added dimensions to it. Yeah, this, this feels different here tonight. 
Out of bounds off of Gonzaga. So Santa Clara with the 6 2 lead gets the ball back. And as Sean mentioned, they gave, what, 800 jerseys to the students? And they gave two to us. They, they did. We'll show them off when Steve joins us here courtside. And then also you said the Broncos are wearing the throwback. These are the uniforms that Nash wore when he was a player at Santa Clara. And they haven't ever worn these before. Ball no good. Rebound. O'Neal scores. And the length of Santa Clara right now causing some problems for Gonzaga. They have three seven-footers on this Santa Clara roster, plus Johnny O'Neal, 6'10". Stromer, good entry pass to Watson, but then it was poked away. Out of bounds off of the Broncos, and that'll send us to our first timeout. Really good job by Santa Clara early. They're on a 6-0 run. The Zags have missed their last four. Energy level has been tough, but the last two years, they've had guys that have been, been able to move on and, and make a difference at the next level. And... Pajemski's been huge for the Golden State Warriors at times this year with guys being out with injuries, suspensions, all sorts of certain things, but he's made his impact. And Jalen Williams, he's a potential all-star eventually at that next level. He's trending in that direction. DK with the left hand, and he scores a much-needed bucket for the Zags. It's 8-4 to four, Santa Clara. O'Neal, tough pass and a good pass. Ball, short on the three. Ball tipped around and saved in by... Anton Watson. I really liked out of that last time out though. Uh, Gonzaga 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. Look at the first two possessions where they've got the ball. They got it to EK on the block. The very next time Watson comes down, knows he has an advantage and spin moves into an easy deuce. For all the size of Santa Clara on the defensive end, I think they're going to have a hard time against yeah. Anton Watson. And I think you got to continue to feed the ball into the post if you're Gonzaga and allow the interior presence kind of carry you through at least the early stages of this game. Shot clock under 10 for Santa Clara. And really historically, what have the Zags always done? They've dominated the paint. Yeah. Long three for Brent Napper. How about that? Confident looking shot for the sophomore. Rebounded really well last weekend, averaging eight rebounds per game in the first two in conference play. Just under 10 points per contest, but he shot that one with confidence. They got to bring a double team right away. You cannot allow Graham Ike to go one on one in the block. And start to back you in. That's that's going to be a disadvantage for Santa Clara. Advantage for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. As big as Francisco Cafaro is, the transfer from Virginia, Graham E.K. just got right to the rim, and Cafaro fouled him before the shot. Tilly back in, Marshall back in, Jay Gensminger in for the first time for Santa Clara, and Ben Gregg off the bench for the Zags checks in, coming off one of his best games that he's ever had. Iso, ISO ball right now. They're going to call carry against EK. I like Graham EK catching the ball maybe two or three feet off the block. I don't know if I ISO him off the three point line. Some pressure for Gonzaga. Pull up jumper with the soft touch for Tyree Bryant. He mentioned the depth of this team, guys coming off the bench being able to score. Bryant struggled a little bit last weekend, just 2-9 and nine from the field, but if you look at the numbers overall this season, he has been an important player for Santa Clara. Hickman uses the screen, gives it back to E.K., working his way close again, and another basket for E.K. Much better. Yeah. Let him set the screen, let him roll, let him gain momentum going to the basket, and then allow one dribble and finish. Now low Tilly. His turn to make a move against EK, but he missed the shot. A little push follow, no good. And another offensive rebound, and Ben Gregg just ripped it away and saves it into Demhart. And Zanga might have an advantage. Watson on the move. Watson lays it in. In transition, Anton Watson's one of the best finishers as a running forward in our game. Meanwhile, Marshall, out of control, just lost it. And another transition opportunity for Anton Watson with the foul. Count the basket. Now you turn the ball over against Gonzaga, and they are going to turn it into points at the other end of the floor, in particular if 22 is out in front. Back-to-back -back possessions where Anton Watson runs the floor. He is strong. 
and he is physical and he's able to absorb the contact keep his shoulders square and a soft touch off the glass I mean the Richard freshman Jake Gensminger from Germany just went flying with that contact That's how big and strong Anton Watson is Free throw good completes the three-point play and Gonzaga has tied this game and They have done it by attacking the paint e Ever off. since that first time out yeah. Dave everything they've scored has been inside the paint a 7-0 run They've made their five for their last five and everything is coming towards the basket You were not in the huddle with mark few, but I do believe that was the message that was given yeah. Allow the defense force the defense to have to, to shrink and, and start To collapse into the paint and then that's going to open up your perimeter shot and allow that rhythm to come more naturally Benjamin now running the point for Santa Clara Broncos had a little drought offensively last few possessions and that'll be another turnover That's the turnovers though. That's their fifth turnover of the game Already for Santa Clara Braden Huff off the bench for Gonzaga making his move and in and out Marshall three Ball out of bounds and off of Gonzaga. Oh, and fingers kind of flying around, keeping some balls alive. Hustling off the bench. He's an effort player. And he had nine combined rebounds in 38 minutes last week. They need him. They just know what you do and do it really well. Yeah. And that's one of the things that he does really well. Meanwhile, Carlos Marshall coming back out. I think Herb Sende almost looked like he was checking on you. Okay. Yeah. But Carlos made one tough shot early in this one. Since then, hasn't looked like himself. Double team in the corner. Tough place to inbound the ball. And a good job by Bryant just to save it off of the Zags player. And good defense. Everything is amped early. You know, like then Zaga came out flat, and now all of a sudden, David, the energy level, the body language in which you're seeing. Much more to the norm of what we've seen over so many years of watching this team. Again, having a hard time getting it in. All the way into the backcourt. Three pointer. No good. Another loose ball there. Enfinger again had a hand on it, but it never hit the rim. So that's a shot clock violation. It's been really good defense. Yeah. It's been defense that has been disruptive, creating turnovers. Then you see just just good contesting body positioning, not getting caught in rotations, making sure you're keeping your defensive integrity on that possession. Zags have sort of stabilized here in the first half. Watson spin move first lead for Gonzaga just easy uh, He's had some great games and oh, you know, he's a rhythm player and sometimes you start to see him get that bounce And you start to think it's gonna be a big night for Anton Watson Broncos grab the lead right back Brian with the three Brian Emhard His brother was such a good player for Gonzaga Huff, shot clock winding down. Greg has to shoot. Came up short. Just, just know he shot goes up. He came all the way from the outside of the wing to track that rebound down and get an easy two. That was a cool play for the freshman. Greg three in and out and another rebound. Fingers giving Santa Clara some nice stuff off the bench. Yeah, that might have been a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> the quick three in transition was no good. 
Hickman drives runner too strong. They're going to call a foul against Benjamin for pushing off. So that'll take us to a timeout. The Broncos with a three-point lead. He's missed a popular tonight. We'll see if we can get him to make his way through all these Santa Clara fans. Got to give a lot of credit to, you know, when Rene, our athletic director, who is really pushing. And, um, you know, that's so important, as you know, to try to create a program that can sustain. So proud of everyone involved here. Gonzaga has the ball. Steve Dash joining us here. Homecoming for him. Back to the place where his... I wouldn't say your basketball journey got started, but your college basketball journey was here. A great career at Santa Clara. Ryan Nemhard, good point guard for the Zags, and he scores. Great point guard tradition in this league. John Stockton, of course, played for Gonzaga his college career. You here at Santa Clara, many, many others. Also, also a Canadian. That's incredible. I mean, when I was, you know, at Santa Clara, I think it was like maybe Bill Winnington in the NBA. That was it. Um, so for us now to have 20 plus NBA players from Canada is like unfathomable from 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 the perspective of 20 years ago. So it's incredible. Um, I know there's been uh, uh, a huge growth of the game globally, and as you see on both both sidelines now, a lot of a lot of international players. But uh, incredible for Canada, so many talented NBA players. Steve Nash with us here. Gonzaga has always had an international presence on their roster. A little less now, actually, than over the last many years. Ryan Nemhard, whose brother Andrew's doing very well in the NBA, played at Gonzaga at the end of his college career. Young man at the free throw line, seven footer. I think he's got a lot of potential. German, yep. Gustav Tilly, skilled yep, big well. man. Playing well. Uh, big addition to the team here, obviously, is a. You know, it could be a focal, a focal point both ends of the floor for the Broncos. When you played in the WCC, what was the level of play like in your era? Hmm. I, I mean, it was all-time greats, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Hall of Famer on the court. Yeah. No, you know what? At, our, at that time, uh, the way I looked at it, having, having you know, moved on to, to the NBA, was it was an extremely competitive, well-coached, smart basketball team. So every every night was a dogfight. Um, you know, now obviously you get, you know, St. Mary's, Gonzaga has had some success. Santa Clara with two first round picks who are, are merging in the NBA uh, over the past couple of years. So, you know, a lot more going on in the WCC than it was in my day. Hey, you mentioned it coaching. Your coach is here tonight with you, sitting next to you. I grew up in the Bay Area in the East Bay. Dick Davies a legend. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what did he mean to you and your growth for and sure. development while you were a player here yeah. that helped you have the success you had at the well, next level? First of all, fantastic coach. So I don't want to diminish what a great coach he was, but really the coaching element that he provided me with that I'll take with me forever is mental toughness. You know, he challenged us every day. And I think that kind of environment where a coach is tough on you every single day, demands a lot of you, expects you to play with your heart and with your head, um, you know, that was incredible for me as far as building a foundation to overcome a lot of odds, a lot of things that come up, you know, at the pro level as well. So uh, he just had an incredible influence and impact on me. Good defense that time. 35-second uh, shot clock violation. I think I read a story one time, or maybe Dick told me, that when he saw video of you, well, he's sort of hidden from our view there. Yeah. But when, 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 <laughs> when he saw video of you, he was like, I hope nobody else sees this. Because he wanted you here, and he was afraid if anybody yeah. else saw you, you weren't going to end up in Santa Clara. I, I think the actual story was the video was so bad <laughs> as far as quality and opponents. They, they you know, took a graduate assistant, Scott Graydon, to say, no, we should follow up. Uh, Coach Davey came up to watch me play, and that's when he said uh, I hope no one else is here, and I, and I got lucky because that was my only offer. And, you know, I owe these guys uh, the world for the career I was able to have. What, what's the state of the game in your mind? I mean, we talk about the professional ranks and analytics have become such mm -hmm. a major part of it. Uh, and, and the way the game is taught at a young age now, look, the art of the mid-range jump shot has seemingly died down a little bit. Where do you evaluate the state of college basketball yeah. and the state of basketball overall? You no, know, I'm not an expert on college basketball, I'll say for sure. But, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot, a lot less space in college basketball. You know, in a sense, college basketball is a harder game to play because of the spacing issues, the way the NBA has opened up the floor. Um, you know, the rules, less physical in the NBA, essentially, um, but more physical players. 
Um, and then analytics has a, and the rules make a major difference in the game. So I think the game's great at all levels. The game's growing. The game's international. Um, however, it, it changes. Some of it's cyclical, but some of it also is not going to change. You know, we, it's almost embarrassing to think that none of us figured out a three was worth 50% more than a two <laughs> back in the day, but it took us about 40, 50 years to figure that out. Um, but that's not going away, right? So mid-range shots are going to be under are, are going to be of low value considerably, but uh, there's not that doesn't mean that you don't use your head. Ball, and as long as they continue to share the ball and trust each other and have that kind of ball movement and not turn it over at the clip in which they're playing with. Yeah, that's that's a Kentucky team that's good enough to be in Arizona at the end of the year. Yeah, since you and Steve Nash were talking about college to NBA, the first rounders the last couple of years from here at Santa Clara, Broncos have had a really hard time getting the ball in bounds. That is eight turnovers. Greg in transition got fouled. And way too many turnovers for Santa Clara, and a lot of them of that variety, and a good job running the floor for the Zags. Now eight turnovers that have already uh, led to six points off those turnovers Santa Clara only two points off the turnovers so far uh, one of the big things in this game that you know again you get a Hall of Famer between us we're gonna talk to him you know but even during that stretch the ability of Santa Clara to get on the offensive glass they have a seven to one advantage in offensive rebounds in this game and Gonzaga's got to do a better job of cleaning up their defensive glass It was both. Greg missed both free throws. Ball goes out of bounds off of Gonzaga. So that's a missed opportunity. Santa Clara still leads by four. You talk to Coach Cal. Zags have tons of players in the NBA playing at a really high level. Chet Holmgren, who's Jalen Williams' teammate in Oklahoma City. You got the two first rounders from Santa Clara. Nobody, Kentucky, by far the most current players in the NBA come from Kentucky at any school. I think Chet and Jalen are watching this game together right now. I hope so. I don't know if OKC's playing tonight. I didn't look at the NBA schedule. It's usually well, pretty light on Thursday. What a season they've had so far. Tilly and Watson just backed up until he fell down. Just pulled the chair on him. He did. And it worked. Nolan Hickman, three. No. Omega oh. still has not made a three. 0 oh for 8 been a problem for this Zags team not a lot of shooting uh, the, the shooting on both sides has just been ugly Dusty Stromer the freshman this is a matchup that Anton Watson could maybe back back down on the post if they clear out I think he's thinking the same thing here's Nemhard off the pass from Watson still no threes made for the Zags in the first half. If you don't make three-pointers in today's college basketball landscape, it is really, really difficult. I mean, we saw that last night in the Colorado Cal game. The disparity from the three-point line ended up being a huge reason why Cal was able to come from behind and erase what was at one point in time a 20-point deficit to win at home. Another Santa Clara turnover and another good play by Watson. Stromer, three in transition. No. Made 10 turnovers from Santa Clara. If they cut those turnovers in half with how they've shot the ball here, this lead would be much larger. Almost turned it over again. Napper, three. He off to the side. He knew it. But another offensive rebound and then another turnover, although that one was kicked, so it won't be a turnover. I don't know if there's too much adrenaline early in this game or what, but these two teams are better than they're showing right now. I would not disagree with you, partner. And Santa Clara won at Stanford. They beat Oregon. They beat Washington State. But we talked about up top. I said, how do they pull off the upset? What was the first thing I said? Santa Clara needs to value the ball. They are not valuing the ball here in the first half. Herb Sendak told us point blank. When we've struggled this year, we've not protected the ball. That's been our number one issue. And that's popping up here. They, they, right, right now, they, can't they get the ball cannot bounce. get the ball in bounds. Well, and, and as much as they've had some of these turnover issues, it's not like the Zags have converted them into points. I mean, Gonzaga has gone four minutes without a point. So both sides, I mean, Zags got to be frustrated by that. Santa Clara's got to be frustrated by that. They haven't scored for four minutes, and we're only up four.
Nice drive, and then the shot from point blank range was missed by Tyree Bryant. Amazing. Anton Watson, layup good. Downhill, so difficult to stop. He's having a heck of a first half. They're gonna call a foul. Okay, he's got 13 of their 21, Anton Watson. I mean, where they would be without Anton Watson at this point in time would be completely lost. And a lot of his production has come in transition. And if he sees a seam or a gap that he feels like he can attack, he's gonna finish. Yeah, the monster game in Maui against UCLA. He's had a lot of big games in a long, distinguished Gonzaga career. O'Neal contested three. Good. That kid can shoot. And he size can shoot it from the outside. A career 37% three-point shooter. At 6'10, Watson. And the Broncos looking to run. Marshall one on two. Spin move. Draws a foul. The Santa Clara team, as you mentioned, they, they have some great wins. They have some wins that they can really hang their hat on. And then they had some losses in there that they're kind of like ones that they felt like they should have been able to get. And a big one would have been the Utah State game. So close. Right and against a very good team that's that's playing really well. They just beat I think Colorado State last week. They stormed the court. But they did not play well against Yale in this building. You know, for the whole league, uh, you're talking specifically about Santa Clara. Six and zero start, two and zero in conference play. That's good. Best three point shooting team by percentage. In the league, but the ups and the downs are described. I think it describes the whole league. The yeah. non-conference season for the WCC was not as successful as it has been for many years. Yeah, first season two without BYU, they made the jump over to the Big 12. Yeah, I see BYU off to a slow start inside conference play, but had a great non-conference. Air ball from EK, but Watson there to grab the miss and put it in. Another bucket for Watson. He's got 15. It's probably one of those nights where you just lean on him and, and you know as a teammate of his you got to sometimes understand like okay This is our guy right now. Let's let's continue to try to put him in a situation to be successful Brian picked up his dribble looking for some help Benjamin almost slipped hits the shot tough two. really difficult to the grad transfer from Mount St. Mary's Emhar goes right by Benjamin, then missed the shot. Marshall pushed off. Offensive foul. Well, Santa Clara right now has been a little bit more opportunistic. And been able to shoot the ball a little bit better. Right, can I go to my cell phone? I got James Jones from Yale saying thanks for the shout out. I got Fran Fraschilla texting me the score of the OKC Trailblazers game tonight. They were in action. It was only the fifth largest win in NBA history at 62 point margin. Pretty good for OKC. Chet had 19. Jalen had 21 and 7. Yeah, that's my bad. I should have checked the Thunder schedule before we started tonight. I count on you for those things, yeah. Dave. Turnover Gonzaga. Ball in transition, a little step through, lays it in. Nice move. Uh, I love his length. I love his athleticism, how fluid and comfortable he is with the ball in his hands. Biggest lead for Santa Clara. Nolan Hickman, runner, good. I hope that now that they're sitting back after an historically great win, the Oklahoma City Thunder stars, Chad Holmgren and Jalen Williams, one on each side of this rivalry. I hope they're watching. Put a pizza on it or something. Yeah, come on. Gotta have a little something on the line. Down low, nice pass and a foul. Good cut by Cafaro. You know, we talked so much about turnovers, taking turnovers and trying to turn them into points. There's been 11 turnovers by Santa Clara. Six points off those turnovers. Only three turnovers for Gonzaga. The difference is they've converted two of them. So it's only a six to four advantage. Even though Santa Clara has been careless with the basketball, the Zags really haven't made them pay as much as they should have. 
By the way, that foul on Graham E.K., that was his third. He's going to have to come out of the game. we got another women's college basketball triple header for you on Sunday afternoon, starting at 1 Eastern on ESPN, number 21, Florida State, number 11, Virginia Tech. we get Angel Reese and LSU at Auburn at 3 Eastern, Tennessee at Texas A&M at 5 Eastern all on Sunday. Missed free throw, another offensive rebound for Santa Clara. Ball, three. How about that? I mean, that, does that not epitomize what we've seen in the first half? Nine offensive rebounds in the first 17 minutes of this game for Santa Cruz. Now on Sports Center, another wild night. Watch me, watch me. Right, back here in Santa Clara, biggest lead for the Broncos, a 13-4 run. It's 36-25. Hickman loses the ball. And Santa Clara's got a chance to add to that lead. Benjamin attacks. Benjamin against one of the best defenders in the country scores. A 13-point lead here for the Broncos. You talk about trying to close the half with momentum. Mark Few on the, the missed free throw offensive rebound was about as mad as I've ever seen it. Crossover for Nemhard, way off the mark with that three. Still over from behind the line. Ball kind of feeling it right now. Tough pull up. No good. And I think that that's when you want to work that possession a little bit, understanding the momentum on your side. Tough big man three. Good. The first Finally three. one goes down for the Zags. One for 12 Ooh. from beyond the arc. So Claire's made five of them. Up 10 under two minutes. Benjamin with that pass in the corner. Brian, good. Using that strong closeout, trying to close out to the three-point line. Now you can drive in a straight line drive and attack that closeout. Nemhard finds Huff, who lays it in. A good find that time by Nemhard. Leads the conference in assists. He's playing in front of one of his heroes, Steve Dash. Brian for three, left side, no good. Oh, Neal almost grabbed the board. He goes down. Here comes Gonzaga. Watson down the lane, foul. The Zags aren't boxing out. I mean, that's just on the weak side. They're not boxing out, and they're allowing Santa Clara even on that possession. I know they didn't get it, but but Mark Hughes looking at his bench going, who wants to be physical enough? Right now, the, the more physical team is the one in white. He had some strong words, I think, for Ben Gregg, who's getting ready to come back in this game. Think about this. Just the total rebound numbers, Dave, in this game. It is plus 17 Wow, for Santa Clara here in the first half on the glass. You go on the road, and you're minus 17 in the first half. The challenge is, are you going to be physical enough in the second half of this game to match what the Broncos have done in the first half on the glass? Watson made both free throws. What a half he's had. 17 of the Zags, 32. And some pressure set up. Maybe just to eliminate the possibility of a two for one. Make him take some time getting the ball up the floor. Tough bounce pass. Marshall. Flipped it up behind his back with his back facing the rim. No good. One shot for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Mark Few wants them to work this down into the final seconds. Does not want to give another chance to Santa, Santa Clara. Anton Watson should get his hands on it, though. Emhard instead scores off the glass. And the horn sounds after all of that. Somehow Gonzaga's only down six. And I think that's what Mark Hughes is going to say going to the break is, guys, we didn't rebound, we didn't shoot, and we're only down six. The physicality. Can they get on the board, Dave? Can Santa Clara continue to do that, by the way, and start to cut down on some of the turnovers? 11 turnovers in the first half. I agree with you. It's not often that a team would go one of 12 from three-point range, and we would 
semi ignore that. I mean, Gonzaga didn't make outside shots. That was not the biggest issue in the first half of the Zags. Santa Clara ball as we start the second half. Ball got knocked down. They'll call a foul against Watson. That's just his first personal foul. Graham E.K. had three personal fouls in the first half. He had four points and only one rebound. And he's a guy that we featured off the top of this contest because the last four games he was averaging more than 20 points per contest. Tilly against E.K. who's got those three fouls. Maybe not a bad idea to try to go after him early, but E.K. just held his ground. Tilly fade away. Good. The, the length of Santa Clara is difficult to prepare for. They have multiple foot, seven foot players. There's very few teams in the country that have the length that Santa Clara has on the interior. First possession of the second half for Gonzaga. EK. Watson offensive rebound and the put back who spins in. Anton Watson continues to be the guy. Carrying this team. Somebody else has got to join him though tonight. Good pass. Really good until he, I think he could have gone a little quicker. Instead he took his time and missed it. Almost to travel. Tilly got fouled by E.K. Wow, so that's doubly bad for Gonzaga. It's a turnover, and then E.K. trying to get the loose ball. Pushed Tilly to the floor, and that's his fourth personal foul. Less than two minutes into the second half, he's got to go right back to the bench. And then what does that do? It allows that size of Santa Clara to be a little bit more aggressive. Huff is a good player, but he, he's not as tough and as physical underneath. On the rebounding wars that might come up throughout the course of this game. Now with EK not in there right away, Napper attacks, hits the basket, plus a foul, chance for a three-point play. Just great composure. They find that seam and then just go up. And not that Graham EK is like a big rim protector, he's not a great shot blocker, but just a physical presence on both ends of the floor that now the Zags are going to be missing. Napper's got such good quickness, and he's always looking to attack off the perimeter and just got into Nemhard's body. Clara is up that lead, back to nine. I, I just get the ball out of Anton Watson's hands. I'm not letting him play back to the basket basketball here. Yeah, they did let him do that one on one. Essentially, no help came and he scored again. Hey, you, you, why not bring help right now and, and try to see if anybody else from Gonzaga can consistently make a shot? They're going to call. I think they said Napper was out of bounds. Stepped on the out of bounds line. I mean, I'm with you. If you're Santa Clara. Just make somebody else prove that they can score. Well, and, and it's also where Anton Watson catches the ball. If he's flattened out and he gets the ball in the position he's at right now, you go double. Okay, maybe not right now. Now that he puts it on, you've got to go. And force somebody else to consistently knock down a shot, something that they have not done the entire evening. They haven't done it. Nolan Hickman missed the three. Carlos Marshall has been a little wild tonight. Tilly trying to post up O'Neal over Watson. Too strong. Stromer grabs a defensive board. Lemart on the attack. He draws a foul. And I think they call that a shooting foul. They did. Well, Ryan Lemart's definitely a guy who could help Anton Watson. He's had his moments tonight. Six points, only three of nine shooting. Makes the first free throw. 
talking about wall-to-wall -wall college hoops on Saturday right here on ESPN. The first three games, Syracuse, Carolina, the ACC, SEC, Kentucky, Texas A&M, and then another SEC matchup. Todd Golden, old USF coach at Florida from the West Coast Conference, now in Gainesville, hosting Arkansas. Both free throws good. The lead back down to five. I mean, all the positive things for Santa Clara, and the lead is five. Yeah. Like, it just feels like if Gonzaga can just get a couple of stops sustained, somebody else besides Anton Watson, make another three-point shot, take some energy, and all of a sudden flip the script, you start to apply the pressure to the home team, right? Like, right now, the pressure is on Gonzaga. They're on the road. Santa Clara's playing with good energy. The fans have good energy. I mean, look, the college players obsess about this kind of stuff. They don't. However, oh, wow. Extra pass, corner three. Good. Nice ball movement. Yeah, but it's poor defense up top. Lunging, reaching, getting yourself out of position. Good ball movement beats bad defense that time. Now, Watson. What would Gonzaga be without Anton Watson tonight? I mean, he might need to go for more than just his, normal, his career high against UCLA. Down Santa Clara keeps it. Uh, and just watch the lunge and the reach out top. And you just, now you vacated spots. Nemhard just made himself a non factor. Watson's got to defend too. No chance you can do it. What was anybody doing on that possession? From Santa Clara perspective, they were saying, hey, we're going to get a wide open shot just like they did right there. Yeah, wide open for the corner and another three for Tyree Bryant. Mark, Mark Hughes called timeout because Dusty Stromer had no idea where his man was. The young freshman out on the floor and he's watching the ball and has no awareness of where his guy is and what was a five point lead all of a sudden now you look to an end. And Mark Hughes team, the, the point I was making, Sean, you, you said pressure on the Zags. Are they obsessing over it? No. But I guarantee you, all these Gonzaga players know their team has been in the top 25 for years and years and years consecutively. If they lose this game tonight, that streak's probably coming to an end. And it's, it, it, in a way, it's the bigger picture pressure of the expectation level of this Gonzaga program. Hickman, tough shot, hop there for the putback. Good putback, good offensive rebound by Huff. Not a lot of offensive rebounds in this game. For Gonzaga. Huff's giving him some nice minutes off the bench. A couple big baskets. Ben Greg who checked in for Stromer. Good defense by Hickman. They call a foul. Dropped his hand down on the arm of the shooter. And that'll take us to a timeout. 51-44. You would think that if they lose this game tonight, that streak come... Monday is going to come to an end. Yeah, but all that being said and you can look at the numbers and the rebounding differential and The points differential from the three-point line and all the things that have gone right for Santa Clara Santa Clara has not given themselves a, a wide margin to exhale and breathe For the final 15 minutes of this game. Yeah, I mean true. it is one run away from Gonzaga Taking the lead of this of this contest one of two for Brenton Napper. We don't have it down here. UCLA just lost by 46 points to Utah. Wow. Crisis time in Westwood. Worst loss in program history was 48, and that was to Stanford. All right, Nemhard, no good. Now Broncos looking to run. Yeah, they've done a better job of not turning the ball over here to start the second half. Ryan on the attack. No it's good. Balance. Yeah. His shoulders weren't square. He was drifting across the paint. And John Watson, 23 points, 10 of 11, making 11 of 12, and a chance for a three point play. I will continue to say they need to double team. Anton Watson if he's playing bully ball wait till he puts the ball on the floor for the first time if he catches the ball as low as he did right there You've got to bring a double team and allow your defense to try to get the ball out of his hands Because when it's in his hands tonight, he is the one guy on the floor That can't miss for Gonzaga He's got 25 the rest of the Zags combined now he's got 26 have 21
and have made nine shots. He's made 11 all by himself. Five point lead. David, it's two stops. See if they can get one of them here. Ball, wild dribble behind the back. They got one, and they got the breakout for Dem Hart, who lays it in. Lead is down to three. Three pointer, too strong, long rebound, wide open. Benjamin three, short, and Ben Gregg grabs a rebound. Two wide open looks, and now, unbelievably, the Zags could tie. No whistle, shot good. And all of a sudden, as Jim gets a little quieter, the pressure starts to shift a little bit to Santa Clara here. Let's see how they respond. I said it was just one quick run, and that's really what it's been. I mean, two possessions, two stops, and boom, you're right back in the game. Ball had it chopped away from behind and then lost it out of bounds. They're going to call a foul. One official was saying Gonzaga ball. The other official from behind said foul. I think it was a foul. Yeah. There's a slap on, from behind by Nolan Hickman. Correct call. And Santa Clara, this is a big possession for them. They've been in control of this game for a majority of the night. Tilly against Greg elevates no good tough rebound and it starts with just being a little bit better on the defensive glass too Watson missed a three Great pass Tilly dunks it home That was outstanding movement and a beautiful cut by Tilly right down the middle of the paint I think Ensminger, who got the assist there, he's giving Herb Sendek some good minutes off the bench. Top scores. Good touch. Just feel where the defense is. Spin off and give yourself an angle. Ball. Good. <laughs> Difficult shot, and it went down. Adama Alpha ball. The Arizona transfer. Back and forth we go. Alpha's got the little guy on him, so now he wants to clear out. Spinning his way closer to the basket. Good job by him. They'll call a foul on the floor. No basket. Yeah, got the switch. What I like about that play more than anything is the fact that Huff recognized that he had the switch and literally told everybody, get out of my way, I'm going here. They need somebody else to be assertive on the floor right now besides Anton Watson. Huff feeling it a little bit after scoring that previous possession down. Yeah, he's got nine points. It hasn't been perfect. He's had some missed assignments on defense, hasn't boxed out a couple times, but he's doing some good things for Gonzaga out there. Emhart, nice dish to Huff, basket and a foul. Yeah, I, I like the emotion of the game, right? You're on the road. You need to show some emotion. You need to play with some emotion. It was a stagnant first half across the board for the guys in blue. But Huff now trying to make his presence felt. A beautiful pass by Nemhart and a great read. But Huff putting himself in position and providing a spark. I and mean, Graham Ike is on the bench with four personal fouls. He's the guy you've been leaning on. And now all of a sudden you're looking at Huff saying, okay, can you step up and help your team? He's got 12. Tie game with 12 minutes to go. He has stepped up big time. Carlos Marshall back in for Santa Clara. Marshall for three. Short. Watson and Nemhard both were there for the rebound. Thought that should have been a foul actually on Anton Watson just running straight through the screen. Gonzaga has not led since 12 minutes in the first half. Now they lead. Another basket for Huff. What a big night for Huff. Huge. 
And he's had some big games, but maybe not in, in a more important setting when his team needed it most. Tilly challenged. He'll go to the free throw line. But amazingly, on the night that Steve Nash has come back to watch his alma mater, Santa Clara, play for the first year in the second half. What a what a response. What an effort out of 34 in blue. And I love what you said. Bring some emotion yourself. I mean, he has played hard, and he's been feisty. The game of basketball has to be played with passion. Has to be played with emotion. And this Gonzaga team at times is very flat. Yeah. And they get along, and they all like each other, and... They compete and they want to be great, but need that little edge. And that edge comes with somebody that screams and lets out in motion after a big bucket like Huff did a couple of possessions ago. And all of a sudden everybody else is like, yeah, man, I'm with you. Let's go. And when you're on the road in a difficult game where you've been struggling, you need that. You have to have that. Tied once again. Nemhard three. Good! Just the second three-pointer made of the night. Two of 15 from deep. Two but a big one. 15. And they're up by three. Bad pass. Tough pass. Knocked away by Greg. Cameron Tung just gave it up. Now Nemhard on the move. And Tilly. Just that ball was, yeah, it wasn't going in. That, that ball had no chance of going in. And you just gifted two points to the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Now that was a gift. But after everything the Zags have gone through, watch this as this shot goes up. I mean, this one has no chance of going in. None. Easy call. Three. No. Rebound. Watson had to go off his hands out of bounds. This is the biggest Gonzaga lead. So what flipped? How has this happened? How about one offensive rebound so far in the first ten minutes? Or first nine minutes of the second half versus the nine offensive rebounds they had in the first half. Gonzaga has fought harder on the glass. A lot harder. That's helped their defense. That's helped them limit them to one possession. And then it's allowed them to also run off of those missed shots and try to attack in transition and find advantages in individual matchups. Ball, little shot fake, got free, high arching three! A beautiful three from Ball. Ben Greg's helped on the rebounding front in the second half, but he's had a quiet night overall. Setting a screen here for Nemhard. We'll kick it back to Greg. And then he loses it. Greg's yeah, got back on defense. O'Neal three. No. Rebound Watson. Great job by Anton Watson, sealing on the inside, gathering that rebound. The rebound margin starting to thin for Santa Clara. Emhard kind of leaning away, no good. Let's go, Chef! Nice look, cross court Tilly to Marshall, and he airballed it. Hey, just a beautiful pass over the top. One that Marshall has got at least put on iron. And you look at his percentages over the course of the year. Very good three-point shooter. I mean, it does tell you. They, they, they said to us he's been under the weather. He has not looked like himself tonight. That was a great pass and an open look. Tags ball up to... Almost a turnover. Watson saved it. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Ryan Nemhard down the lane into the corner. Watson three. Well short. O'Neal on the attack. Marshall right into a double team tried to pass out of it turned it over Man, He might need to take him out of the game I mean that's an air ball and then a very costly turnover in a moment where you dribble in too deep And you just toss it up in a, in a two-point game totally out of sorts Carlos Marshall 
Nice look, Huff. Shot fake. Heaves up the three. Way too strong. Outlet to O'Neal. Swatted by Huff, who hustled back on defense. Nice job by him. Santa Clara does keep it. Marshall, another bad pass. Huff on the floor. He's playing hard. Jump ball. Arrow favors Gonzaga. Couple Huff maybe has never played this hard. Well, and, and this important minutes too. On the back, because he has played so well here tonight. 14 points, four rebounds, two block shots. He's drawn three fouls. He's been very efficient. And just the energy and the emotion in which he's played with, I think, sparked Gonzaga on this entire run to come back and take the lead. Yeah, his team badly needed it. And now he's on the bench. E.K. back in with four fouls, under eight minutes to go. Anton Watson, who's carried Gonzaga offensively, elevates. No. Rebound, Broncos. Ball pulls up, scores. How fluid is that? I mean, that's a pro move right there. In transition, six foot seven, get to your spot in the paint, elevate with great touch. Kid who played in high school against Victor Victor Wembanyama. Started his career at Arizona, now here at Santa Clara. That's a foul against the Santa Clara big man. Tafaro can't believe it. We're just watching transition. They're looking at the little hesitation. Get to your spot right at the logo. A little floater game action. You get to the logo and you have a good floater game, you can score a lot of points. Yeah, how do you stop that? EK. That was good defense. Watson there, though, for the putback. O'Neal, left hand, scores. Just great job taking from the perimeter. I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't go inside and try to attack EK and get him out of the game, but really realistically with the way, with the way Braden Huff has played, you might want EK in the game a little bit longer. Well, I mean, here, uh, that wasn't on EK, but just not a great entry pass, and it's a turnover. They have looked more disjointed with EK on the floor than when Huff's been out there. And there's nights that are like that. Look, EK's had plenty of great games as of late. The drive and no finish. But the ball knocked away. Santa Clara comes up with it. Ball was aggressively calling for it. Trying to enter it down low. They do and get the basket on EK. A good pass. And EK's going to have to give up space. Right now, Braden Huff's coming right back in the game because he's giving up space. He can't be aggressive and foul out. Tough way to play. Nemhard from the elbow got the basket. Simple, simple and clean. Tied again. I love the throwback uniforms. By the way, I love the Broncos throwback uniforms. I loved the Zags throwback uniforms they wore the other night. They were awesome. What a crossover move. Three, no good. Napper got open, just missed the shot. Now the Zags can go back ahead. Hard wants to attack Dapper. Three. Way off to the side. He's been shooting the ball so well lately. Not tonight. Ball tried to no look pass. That's just careless. One hand gets deflected and gives the possession right back to Gonzaga. Hickman down the lane. Nolan Hickman draws a foul. Couldn't quite finish. Almost had a chance for a three point play. We touched on this last night. You and I had the Colorado Cal game. In which Colorado was up by 20. Really great game, by the way. And then Jalen Tyson took over in the second half. Jalen Cohn hit a couple threes. And a 14-point deficit was erased real quick. And Cal kind of took momentum on their home court. This has kind of had the opposite side of it, where the road team in the second half has started to take some of that momentum away from the home team. And that's where, when you haven't had success against an opponent, and, and look, it's not this team, but it's it's against this opponent and these two universities. It's been all zags for a long time. Everybody knows about it. Breathe. Yeah. Value the ball that much more. Every pass has got to be two hands, and it's got to be crisp. 
can't have turnovers, can't have empty possessions. Because what happens is Gonzaga's experience, and there's guys on this team that do have experience, like Nolan Hickman. Get to the free throw line, they're making it on the road. Why? Because they've been in this environment their entire career, every road game they play in the West Coast Conference. That's a big five minutes. I know it's early in conference play for lots of reasons. Ball, pull up three, no good off the iron. EK defensive board. Uses the EK screen, lobs it up for him, tried to dunk it home, couldn't do it, but he'll go to the free throw line. Nice little two man game. Really good two man game and a good job trying to free EK up to make an impact here. So you got to be careful even on on ball screens that you're, the point guard's got to make sure the big is set to utilize that screen properly. You don't want him to pick up an illegal screen. He sets a nice one, the defense has to help over ever so slightly. And as Tilly vacates that back spot, EK can go up. EK has had a quiet game. A lot of that has been because of the foul trouble. Just five points now, but made that first free throw. And Zach, seven of seven from the free throw line here in the second half. EK couldn't get the roll. Watson, though, trying to rip it away on the floor. And a dog pile, they'll say jump ball. And the arrow favors Santa Clara. Great effort by Anton Watson. It was one versus the team. And that one was able to really gain possession of it. Everybody else just kind of jumped on him afterwards. <laughs> yeah, Santa Clara got lucky. The Herb Sendex team down three with the ball, four and a half to go. So many wild finishes we've seen this week in college basketball. Are we in store for another one here? Hope so. Extra pass in the corner, three. Good! High game. Excellent ball movement and just overloading the defense and giving up clean, wide open threes. Every time it seems like the Zags have taken a little bit of a lead and, and took the energy out of the building, Santa Clara hits a three and the students get here for the first time in forever. Everybody's wearing the number 11 Broncos jerseys. Gonzaga's streak of being ranked in the top 25 is on the line. 4-13 to go. You think Nicole and Max are thinking, hey, triple overtime. Take it as deep as you want. They love late nights in Bristol, trust me. There's nothing more than they love sitting in the studio until like 1 o'clock Eastern time. Anton, just to get started. Anton Watson out of the timeout. Another basket for Watson. He's got 30. I, I do not understand why they don't take the ball out of his hands. And, and I do not understand why they have not doubled him and try to give him a different look. Tilly, nice move to the basket. Great pass, and he finished. Here comes Watson again. Watson lost it going up. It's a turnover. Ball. One on three. Ball. No. Tip. No. And they're going to say, count the basket. Basket interference. Now, they're going to go look at it, though. Mark, Mark is like, what are you talking about? They're like, don't worry. We're going to take a look at it. Okay, so they determined no basket interference. And then it goes to the possession arrow. Now, that's a pretty big deal because that means the possession arrow now goes back to Santa Clara. So while Gonzaga gets this possession, remember that late in the game if we have a jump ball situation. Oh, and Hickman couldn't finish. Watson there again. Watson had it knocked away. Loose ball. Watson diving for it. And it's knocked off of EK out of bounds. How about the hustle from both teams? Yeah. I mean, Anton Watson is giving every ounce of energy he has every to his day. team right now. But every time he goes for one of those loose balls, Santa Clara players are swarming. And does this loose ball count the number of bodies that hit the Floor. I mean, I, this is conference play. This is when everything starts to intensify and you're trying to build momentum. You're trying to make a statement. Santa Clara knows that a win here tonight is a statement win for their program. They haven't done it in a really long period of time. For them, way too long. January 20th, 2011. The last time Santa Clara beat Gonzaga, ball came up short. Watson another rebound. So it stays tied with three minutes to go. Braden Huff, by the way, back in the game. He's been a big-time difference maker for Gonzaga. M. 
Reinhardt, crossover. And Anton Watson taking a little bit of break on this possession. He's not left the corner. Greg's three, no good, and there's Watson. Took a break to get the energy to do that, and he scores! I mean, he literally stood in the corner, hands on his shorts almost the entire possession. Shot goes up, he goes, wait, I can go grab a rebound and help my team. Ties his career high with 32. 32 points for Anton Watson, 14 of 18 from the field. Now trying to guard Tilly. Making his way to the basket, the big man with the left hand, no. Forced a tough shot. It's Watson walking up with him. Hey, how much more can he give in the final two minutes of this game? Two guys for Gonzaga have emptied the tank tonight when they've been on the floor. Emhart back to Huff. Three. That one no good. Rebound. Hickman almost got it. Instead, Santa Clara ball down two. O'Neal will shoot the three. No way. That one was well off. You could tell it. as soon as that left his fingertips, that had no chance. So now Gonzaga wants to be patient here with the ball up to. They set the on ball screen. Huff will come back and set the screen here. Nemhard behind the back dribble. Got it! What a shot from Ryan Nemhard. Zags up four, one minute to go. Timeout Santa Clara. Nemhard's had a big second half. He has. And he's got 21, four and five. And just understanding, and let's try to get a piece of the paint here. If they collapse, that's where you can find your three-point shooters. And that's where they've had success with the three-point shot. Inbounding the ball. Here's Ball. He wants somebody to come up and set a screen for him. Didn't really use it. Goes down the lane. Great pass for the dunk. Right, get a piece of the paint and put it in the best playmaker, the best decision maker on the team's hands. And I think that was a great move. Now you got to get a stop. And he figured the Zags want to be patient here. Well, this time I engage Anton Watson in the play if you can. Emhard. Emhard, another pull up shot. This one no good. Rebound Santa Clara. Shot clock is off. Broncos down two. And another timeout, Herb Sendek. Ball wanted to just take it. <laughs> yes, he did. I go right back to the same action though they did on the previous possession. They space the floor, set the screen, have multiple, you have a post up. Wouldn't be surprised if you try to show a little bit and force the ball out of his hands. Nolan Hickman will guard Adama Alpha Ball on the inbounds at least. Ball takes it in. Here comes Tilly with that screen. Ball against E.K. Ball goes by. E.K. swats it away, but they'll call the foul. And that's five. Fifth foul against E.K. It'll put Ball to the line with a chance to tie it. And he's arguing all ball. From our vantage point, it looked like it was all ball, to be honest with you, Dave. I think it got a little bit of that wrist. Yeah. Almost on the follow-through, got a lot of ball, and then the follow-through chopped down on the wrist and the arm. Yeah, I mean, that's a foul. It is. So the fifth, Mark Few's going to use it as sort of a half timeout. There's been no free throws attempted tonight by Adama Alpha Ball. 88% on the season from the free throw line, but has not stepped up and been there tonight. And in a big moment, obviously, here, no bigger moment that you can be placed in. I mean, you would say these are the most pressure-filled free throws that he's taken in his college career. There's no question. And regardless of what happens here, it makes both. You've got 14 seconds. you got to get a stop. I would assume that Mark Few would call a timeout once it crosses the half-court line to set up whatever play he's going to. And what we've seen recently is Nebhard in an on-ball screen. It'd be Huff setting the screen. All right, first one for ball is no good. 
one of the best free throw shooters in the country, and he missed it. So that changes everything now. Ball's got to try to make this one. Then make this one, and then you got to foul. You got to extend out pressure. Try to see if you get a turnover quick on the inbounds, get a deflection, something like that. Outside of that, then you got to foul. Zags still lead by two, and they're not allowing O'Neal to sub in. And no time went off the clock. Yeah, so you got to wait. Second one is good. One point game. Stromer comes in for Greg, for, no, for Huff, Huff, rather. Huff, not a great free throw shooter, just 42 attack. And these are our options dependent upon what the score is. That was the last Santa Clara timeout. Zags still have one. Up one. Anton Watson, the inbound passer. See if Nemhard can get it. He does. And they foul him quickly. But that's a guy that Gonzaga will be very happy to have at the free throw line. He is two for two tonight from the free throw line. Came into the game at 84% from the free throw line. And he has been in situations like this. And a huge second half. First one, no good. He missed the front end. Santa Clara could win it with a basket. Ball drives. Ball good with the foul. And a chance to complete the three-point play. The Zags' long streaks are in trouble tonight. Mark Few knows it. On the made free throw, they're going to sub at the table and allow them to set up their defense. Ball didn't make it. Watson. Two seconds. Watson had nowhere to go with the ball. He threw it away. Thirteen years of frustration for Santa Clara.